What's happening, everyone? Welcome to the first in a series of beginner guides for Tekken 8. Uh, in these videos, we'll talk about basic things like moving around and how to attack and blocking and stuff like that. This video will be about inputs and what your buttons actually do. You might think it's pretty simple, just press the buttons and hit them, but there's actually a lot that goes into it that starts at the basic beginner level and still continues to go all the way to the highest levels. There's lots of little tricks that can definitely help you learn a little bit. So first off, Tekken was born with the idea that you have four limbs and four buttons. You have a left punch, a right punch, a left kick, and a right kick. These are controlled by one of each of your four buttons. We refer to these buttons with numerical notation everywhere outside of Japan. They use numbers for directions. But for the most part, Everywhere else you're going to speak English about Tekken, you're going to use numbers to represent your buttons. And they look like this. One, two, three, and four represent your left kick or your left punch, your right punch, your left kick, and your right kick, respectively. Now, the easiest way for me to think about this and describe it is if you think about a boxer training against a heavy bag and he's just punching it. One, two, one, two, one, two. All he's doing is left, right, left, right, right? Look at a boxer doing this. Imagine them just boom, boom. Boom, boom, with the heavy back. One, two, one, two. The old one, two punch. Hit him with a jab, follow up with the right. One, two. That's the simplest sort of mnemonic trick I have to remember that stuff. One, two punches, your left hand is your jab, which is one, and your right hand is the follow-ups, which is two. Every character in this game is right-handed, meaning they stand facing this way, their left hand is forward, and their right side is back. A uh, couple characters can fight back turn and switch foot and stuff like Hurong and whatever, but for the most part, they're all right-handed. The one is going to be your jab, your fastest move, give or take. Some characters like Steve don't even kick, so his three buttons and four buttons aren't kicks. They're like sway movement techniques and variations like that. 99% of the time, though, one, two, three, four are your left punch, your right punch, your left kick, and your right kick. You may have learned these before with some previous tech and familiarity in terms of colors. That's the way they are in my brain. When I see this whiplash in my brain, it's not necessarily 1-1. One, one. It's pink-pink. I spent 25 years playing this game on PlayStations, so the buttons in my brain are PlayStation colors. This, to me, reads as pink-green-blue. That's what they were. If you're an Xbox player, they're... I don't even know. I <laughs> don't even know what those colors are. Blue, yellow, green, probably. I don't know. So in here, they're just white. There is no color. You have to learn them by their orientation. So I feel like the numerical system ties that all together. You might learn by colors. And if you're playing on Xbox or PlayStation, that'll help. But for the most part, you're going to have to get used to 1-1. One, one. In conversation, 1, 2, 3, 4 is easily the best way. I don't ever want to hear people saying, how do you do that move? And somebody says, press the square button, right? That's just dumb. Every, not everyone plays on PlayStation. It's square button. They can remap their buttons. But what's true is it's one. We refer to whatever he just did as one. So the buttons don't actually matter. So it really, really helps to learn numerical notations when you want to start like talking about tech and asking questions and stuff like that. It's very important to speak the proper language. Now that each button represents a limb, how do Tekken characters have 147 different moves? The answer is the directions. If I just press the two button, right? I just get this little pop. If I press forward two, I get that. You can see in the command history up on the left side there. I'm not a fan of this like scroll view, but it's big in Japan. You can see when I press forward and two at the same time, I got this instead. They don't actually have to be like on the identical frame. You got some leeway, but forward plus two gives you this, whereas regular two gives you that. And so there's a ton of these. There's back two, down back two, straight down and two, down forward and two, et cetera, et cetera. That's how these all work. And each button has that. There's a, a one, a back one, a down forward one, over and over again. That's how, uh, you know, nine directions times each button forms all these different moves. So that's what you really have to learn. The moves of the character that you're learning all come with different button combinations and orders. You can see the move list. These are all just individual button presses, right? All these moves start with a forward. Here, all of these moves start with a down forward, and then these moves have down, etc. That's how the move list is ordered. I personally think that it is kind of interesting to learn moves like, hey, what do my backs do? That's back one, that's back two, that's back three, right? It does kind of help to associate things together that way, so learn it however you will. But directions plus all your different buttons is what forms most of your moves. Uh, the rest of them, as we talked about, are sequences that we call strings. You can see that these basic button presses like Whiplash here, the old pink pink, or Jab Uppercut. 
There's a one, two, three, and a one, two, four. These do different things. There's one, two, three. She does that spinning back left kick. And one, two, four. She does that front right toe kick. These we call strings. They're just sequences of buttons. You can even hear my buttons on the controller. All you press is just one, two, four. Just glide right through it. Some strings are delayable, and some you have to press really fast. But for the most part, you can just tap, tap, tap your three buttons. If you tap, 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 and the third one doesn't come out, you probably have to speed it up. That'd be one of those cases. But you'll learn that eventually. So when you see button strings like these, or Basho Cutter, two, one, two, same thing. You just press two, one, two, and here it comes, just like that. So those are single button presses and sequential button presses. What about combined button presses? Well, those exist too. You can press both punches together, one plus two, and you can see she does this double palm strike. She uses both limbs to hit you. You press three plus four, she kicks you with both feet at the same time. Down three plus four, both feet at the same time, basically. So these are just combined button presses. You use your limbs based on the buttons that you pressed. So since this is two buttons, it's two limbs at the same time, one plus two. Those will be written in the move list as this. They'll just light up both of them at the same time. That means press these buttons together instead of in order like that. So when you see it in written notation, you'll see this written as one comma two, and you'll see this written as one plus two to differentiate the two, to know they don't run together. These are in order, these are together. So those are your two punches and your two kicks together. What about your two left side buttons and your two right side buttons? Well, those are throws. If I press one plus three together, your left punch, left kick, I get that throw, where she leans forward with her left hand to grab you. And if I press the other two, two plus four together, right punch and right kick, she reaches forward with her right hand. She shifts her weight around, grabs you with her right hand first. So these, these are generic throws in this game. Every character can do that. They're highs, they can be ducked, but they can also be broken. You can press the corresponding button to break these throws, and that matches the hand that she threw. Since she grabbed with her left hand forward there, you press, Brian presses his left punch to break that. He sees Asuka's left punch coming, he presses his left punch to break it. And conversely, when he sees her right punch coming, he presses his right punch to break. Now in Tekken 7 forward, when it comes to these generic throws, you can press either one, it does not matter. However, there are throws that involve both. You can see when I press up forward one plus two, this is what we call a command throw. A throw that's different from the generic inputs has its own unique command. So up one plus two, you can see she grabs with both hands at the same time. For Brian to break that, he has to press both of his punches one plus two at the same time. If you press either of the wrong punch button, it will not work. So you do have to be able to read throws to accurately break them. The only change is the generic throws are now breakable by either one or two. But if you have a command throw that uses the two hand to grab, it'll still be a two break. So you have to learn those in order to break throws. And there are plenty of other throws that aren't, that are different combinations of inputs, some are directions, plus buttons, etc. But one plus three and two plus four, your left and your right buttons together are generic throws. So what about the other combination of two buttons throw? That would be two plus three and one plus four. These are very hard to press for a lot of people, especially if you play on a conventional controller with your thumb. Two plus three is almost impossible to press at the same time. So you can map shoulder buttons to do these. They're not generally widely used. However, in Tekken 8, the two plus three button now works for your heat functions. Uh, you can press two plus three to manually do your heat crush like this, or you can press a dedicated button in your controller setup. This will actually do something to, right here. If you press, if I made this my, my right trigger, for example, this will activate heat burst. It will not press two plus three together. They're different. Because two plus three is still involved in some other moves, this is unique. This will activate heat burst. There's no confusion there. You can't screw that up. But if you want two plus three, you can just map that to a different button if you're worried about pressing them together. That's just a simple two. So two plus three will not only activate your heat mode, by doing the crush, it also uses your heat smash while you're in there. Universal button press. But it is technically two plus three, which you can just press if you want to. The other combination, one plus four, pretty rarely used. You're not gonna see this a lot. Asuka happens to have one, this is one plus four. It is a move, she does her right kick and her left punch in very rapid sequence. And she has forward two plus three. This is a punch pair. You can see how she throws her right hand up real quick, 
and then kicks you. This parries punches, and then she kicks you into a combo. So this is still a two limb attack using two buttons. They're just opposite side buttons. This is forward two plus three. Those aren't ultra common, and since the heat system uses that, they moved a lot of moves away from that. So two plus three can stay primarily focused on heat functions. They still do exist. There was nowhere else good to put that move, so they just made it forward two plus three instead of just neutral two plus three and activating your heat. So that's all the ways to press two buttons at once. The only place you're really going to see three buttons is in taunts, which you're also never really going to see. Brian here has a taunt by pressing three buttons at the same time. Now you can see Brian presses one, three, and four together at the same time to perform a taunt. You see that key charge right below. We'll get to that in just a second. So Brian's taunt just does that. It taunts the opponent, doesn't generally do anything. His, however, does. Brian's is very unique. It causes an unblockable hit, and it activates his fiery hand snake eyes mode or whatever that's called. So taunts do exist. They're pretty rare. Not everybody has them, and most of them don't do anything. But it's pretty much the only way you're going to see three buttons together. And finally, all four buttons together, as we just saw in the menu, is called key charge. You press all four of them, and you do a little taunt of your own, but you notice your hands kind of crackle gold afterward. What this does is cause either opponent to enter a counter hit state. The next one of us to get hit, it'll be a counter hit. So you see my regular four kick, right? Doesn't do anything to them, but if I'm in counter hit mode, it knocks them down for follow-up. So as long as my hands are glowy, the next time I hit them, it's a counter hit. The next time they hit me, it will also be a counter hit. So it can be very, very dangerous. You're playing a, a double-edged sword sort of game there. On top of that, the whole time your hands are glowing, you cannot block. You can't block at all. So if they just run up and hit you, it's counter hit city. You got to be careful. So the only time you would ever do this is if you're going for some kind of like ultra tricky setup. It's not generally very smart, but it can be tricky. So you can use this for some weird setup situations like this, for example very quickly. Run up and hit him with can-cans like that. You see, can-cans normally is not a combo, right? They don't get launched by that. But if I'm counter hit charged and I run up, bang, bang, I hit him with a super fast low and they get launched. So they can't really do anything about that other than guess the block. I could just as easily run up with a counter hit mid like that, you know? So they have to make a read in situations like that. Well, the only reason for you to key charge would be if you're going for something silly like that. So be ultra careful. The last thing to talk about is the idea of buffering. This is super important to make all of these things as easy as possible. So for example, if I just hold back, you see the frame counter going away, I'm just holding back, and I press one real quick, boink. I'm still holding back, now I let it go, right? You see what happens there is I'm holding back the whole time, I never let it go. But as soon as I press the one button, the back also registers. And as soon as I let go of the one button after six frames, the back also registers again. So what this does is it makes sure anytime you do something, any buttons or directions that you were holding in get counted. I don't have to technically press back one on the same identical frame. You'll see that's actually absurdly hard to do. Just tap it perfectly like that, good luck. Actually, I got it that time. <laughs> I had back plus one to get on the same frame and I held them for two frames. But you don't need to do that. As long as they're nearby, it's cool. If you hit the back a little bit early and then press one, it'll reactivate your back input. That's what we call buffering. Now this is natural when it comes to forward or backwards directions and stuff like that. It just feels normal, right? You think, oh, if I just hold back and that's what I'm gonna get. If I hold forward and press two, I'm gonna get forward two. That makes sense. What really is the payoff is the buttons that buffer themselves. This is the same way. I'm not holding the one button, right? I'm not letting go, I'm just holding the one button and I just press two. I get that, I got one plus two. You can see in the input, the same thing happened again. As soon as I press two, the one button registered, so two plus one registered together, so I got one plus two. This is a really nice trick to have. What this does is it lets you simplify some of your presses. One plus two, you don't have to press them together on the same frame, but you do have a little bit of a window. If you kind of like separate them too much, you don't press them quite together, you'll get one, two instead, you know? So this simplifies that. A good example is this move, forward, forward, two, and then one plus two. If you look at this move, well, this is forward, forward, two, and then one. They're different inputs. Forward, forward, two, one, does that. Forward, forward, two, one plus two does that, right? They're completely different things. So what you can do, if your goal is to do the second one, right? You can just press forward, forward, two, and hold the two. So as soon as you just press one, you get it. All I'm doing is doing forward, forward, two, and holding in that two button, and then mash the one. 
It always comes out as one plus two because the two is already being held. It's already being registered. So to do the other one, you have to make sure you let go of the two to press the one. Being able to buffer your buttons together is really good. It saves you from prevent or prevents you from doing a lot of accidental inputs by just being ready. You can use this deeper in strings if you're prepared for it, but that's a lesson for another day. Needless to say, if you're holding something in, the next button you press will also count what you're already holding. That's all you really need to take away from that. So those are your inputs. You have four limbs, you got four buttons. You can do some of them together. You can do them in order. You can use directions to move around the field with them and change what they do. That's how you get 137 different moves by all the combinations of up, down, forward, back, twos and threes and fours and all that. Plus all the button combinations, two-fisted hammer punches and double drop kicks and stuff like that. Then you have weird things like taunts, key charge and whatnot, but buffering is the real key here. If you weren't familiar with that, trust me, that'll go a long way once you learn some cool places to implement that into your game. Uh, if you have any questions or something you don't understand, I'd be glad to help you out. So feel free to comment down below and be sure to click the like, subscribe, notify, and all that cool stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Later.